Mr. Speaker. Uh, the Honourable Prosecutor Sam Lutowinger. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, thank you for the opportunity to speak in this debate. Mr. Speaker, what we've just heard from that member is from that member is a whole bunch of allegations, unsubstantiated allegations, with no evidence, no affidavits, absolutely no evidence to suggest what he's saying is true. But I do agree with one thing that that member said. I, along with that member, am appalled with the images that were shown in the last week that have come out of our corrections facilities. I am also appalled and I'm angry about that. And that's why, sir, I have instituted a two-part review to get to the bottom of this, not just these incidents, but other incidents that have come across social media in the last week, sir. So that review, sir, will involve CERCO. CERCO are doing an, an internal investigation. It also involves, it also involves the Chief Inspectorate. It also involves the Chief Inspectorate and also members opposite have asked for an independent investigation. Well, it also involves the Office of the Ombudsman. And I can, I can, the member asked whether that, that, that oversight will be, will be total and I give him an undertaking that it will be. The independent Office of the Ombudsman will be there. Now, sir, what we have in our prisons, in this, in this particular prison, we've seen the violence and we're going to get to the bottom of it. But as I've said in, in question time today, that violence is not just confined to Mount Eden Prison. Not confined to Mount Eden. That member knows it. But members opposite want to make this about an ideological battle about public versus private prisons. What I'm here as Minister to do is to improve the well-being of New Zealanders, to improve the core safety for all New Zealanders across both the private and the public estate. So that's why we've put in place this review, and the review will not just incorporate what is going on in Mount Eden, but we're also expanding it out to what's going on in terms of contraband, in terms of contraband, mobile phones, in terms of, of, of alcohol that might be smuggled in, in terms of all the different contraband, as well as violence in our prisons. But I say that with the caveat, and that member knows this, is that we're dealing with some of the most dangerous, some of the most violent, some of the hardest people in our community, and that's why they're behind bars. And I say to that member that I support the 8,000 staff that work for corrections right across this country who get up every day and do a fine job protecting him, me and all New Zealand citizens. So I say to that member, when he trashes the correction system in this country, when he trashes the people that serve us and all New Zealanders, that he should be careful how he puts that because you know, he is, he is having a go at our democracy and the institutions that protect us as New Zealanders. So let's have a look at these assaults. Let's have a look at these assaults. In Mount Eden last year, financial year 2014, and that member was short on facts, he was short on evidence, but I'm going to produce the evidence right here. Financial year 2014, five assaults at Mount Eden, six assaults at Spring Hill, seven assaults, serious assaults, Prisoner on prisoner assaults at at Rimataka. That that well, that member should go and visit Rimataka and also see how the prisoner state. In terms of prisoner on staff assaults in the last financial year, one at Mount Eden, three at Waikiria. How can you believe that? Because that is what's going on in our prisons. And that may, member may rail against all sorts of things, hearsay evidence that he brings up. But I've worked with the member. Every time he's brought up an assault or, 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 a, or an allegation, I've worked with the member, I've worked with the Department of Corrections to bring about some sort of outcome and investigation into his questions. That's what I've done. But let's look at contraband. Let's look at contraband. Because that member says again that this problem is confined to Mount Eden Prison. Well, clearly it's not, because for the financial year, Financial year 2014, Mount Eden had 79 communications devices that were found. They had 79. Christchurch Prison had 112. And Rimataka had 237. 237. And that member says there's a problem at Mount Eden. No, this, we've got issues right across, right across the estate, sir. Right across the estate. Also, 
I've gone on record, and the member asked this afternoon about Serco's performance. Serco's performance. And Serco's performance, according to the latest uh, performance table for prisons, 31 March 2015, and that member can go to the website and have a look. Instead, he comes in here waving all sorts of stories, all sorts of stories that we don't know whether they're substantiated or not. But I can tell, I'll point out to that survey, core security, internal procedures and rehabilitation. Only one prison has an exceptional rating. One prison. That's Circa. That's Mount Eden Prison. And that's despite the fact that's despite the fact that that prison has 30,000 prisoner movements a year. 4,000 prisoners go in and out of Mount Eden. As a remand prison, that makes it more dangerous, that makes it highly volatile than any other prison in New Zealand. Any other prison in New Zealand. And if that member decides to go and visit Mount Eden Prison, I, I urge him to go and have a look, as I have. He will see how, how, what, a, what a dangerous setup it is and how, 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 how this prison, compared to others in terms of the remand facility, um, has the nature of the prison is, um, is dare I say it, um, highly volatile. But let's look at staffing, because the accusation um, from members opposite uh, are that um, you know, staffing issues uh, have arisen. But you know, in terms of, I've got an undertaking from the, uh, the Department of Corrections that they are fully staffed at Mount Eden Prison. Fully staffed. But I have put them on notice, I've put Circo on notice, that they've got to, I have spoken to the staff, uh, Ms Adun, I have spoken to the staff when I was there last, and they are on notice that they need to improve. That clearly from the images that were uh, transmitted across this country la last week, that things need to improve, and that's what the review is about. And can I just say about uh, the, the death of that um, Mr Evans, I just find it appalling that that member who comes in here says that he cares about families, that family did not want their son and their grandson as part of a political debate. And if he knew that family, he would understand that. Instead, you come in here, that member comes in here and throws around, throws around the sad death of a young man, and you use that, and you use that for your political gain. And I say to that member, shame. I say to that member, shame on him for bringing that in this house, bringing that in this house. And what we need to do as politicians is we need to stay calm. We need to stay calm, wait for the coroner's inquest, wait for the chief inspectorate's uh, investigation, which is what we need to do. But not come in here and throw around political footballs of people's lives that have been lost. And I say shame on that member. I also want to point out to that member who yesterday made various defamatory statements about me. And I say, no, I say to that member, put up some evidence or shut up. Put up or shut up. I say to you, honestly, you're a good guy, Calvin, Mr Davis, but if you don't have any, any evidence around some of those defamatory statements, put up, shut up. That's all I've got to say, all right? Because I received, I received that report, that 2014 report, I, re I got emailed that last Saturday. I read that last night. And you've got evidence to suggest otherwise? You put up or you shut up. Uh, order, order. 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 Don't. Order. Don't. Order. When on my feet, there was silence. Now, I just ask for, to, to calm things down and not to bring the speaker into the debate. Uh, the Honourable, the set assembly to wing up. And he also talked about... Oh, point of, sorry, point, as a point of order, the Honourable Dr Speaker. Nick Smith. Uh, Mr Speaker, you had not resumed your seat and the constant barracking from Mr Davis had immediately I'm the, interjected I'm to the point where I cannot... I'm the judge of that. Order! I'm the judge of that and I've asked members to tone it down. It's been a robust debate and that's fine. Interjections should be rare and reasonable and specifically on the target. I'm calling uh, uh, Pasetta Sam Lutunga. Honourable Pasetta Sam Lutunga. Uh, the member opposite also asked about in terms of monitors, in terms of the um, scrutiny that goes into, um, into overseeing the contract with Circo. 
We know there are uh, two monitors in there. We know that the Office of the Ombudsman can, at any time, um, go into Mount Eden and investigate and examine and ask questions. And he says that there's no auditing going on. Well, that's clearly untrue, sir. And what I'm saying is that there is, there are, there is sufficient um, surveillance um, and monitoring of Serco's contract. And it's, um, and it's important. It's important because there are um, ways in which you know, Serco can, um, has to perform to its contract. And in terms of um, you know, preventing the, the, the contraband that we referred to earlier, sir, you know, there are screening methods. There's a lot that both public and private prison operators do uh, to contain uh, the, the flow of contraband into um, our prisons. We've got per prison perimeter security, and Mr Hipkins knows that. We limit the number of entry points into, into our prisons. We do strip searches of prisoners. We do, we, we, we do background checks of those that visit. Um, Department of Corrections and and public and private prisons, yes, we do that. Um, and we use scanners and X-ray machines in terms of how we um, monitor those that go into our prisons. So, sir, it's, um, it is an ongoing problem, not just here in New Zealand, but across the world. I was at a, um, a, a, a conference for ministers, uh, Australian states and myself as a New Zealand minister, where we discussed a, a number of these issues. And they are not contained just to New Zealand prisons. They're not contained just to Serco. Um, they are issues that are, um, you know, prison authorities and governments have to deal with, not just here but around the world. So, in summary, sir, I just want to say that there is a review going on. Um, it is a two-part review. We uh, need to um, see what went wrong um, at Serco, at Mount Eden Prison. We've got to get to the bottom of um, you know, how um, these violent situations came about. We need to find out how contraband has been smuggled into uh, Mount Eden Prison. I've been assured by Serco that they are um, stepping up security, that they are stepping up to the plate in terms of the fulfilment of their contract. Um, we have a, a, a thorough and robust review in place. Um, it is due next month. Uh, part one of the review is due next month, sir, at the end of uh, August, and then the second part, which incorporates all prisons around New Zealand, will be due by the end of September. I reiterate, sir, as well, that um, you know we are dealing with some of the most uh, dangerous, violent uh, people in our society. It is not a difficult job, but I support the 8,000 men and women that uh, in our public system who uh, work within corrections. I support those that keep us safe every day um, and the work that they do and that, the, you know, and, and clearly, um, sadly, the member opposite doesn't uh, believe that to be true. Thank you, Sue. I call David Clendon. And I'd like to begin my comments.